This is a YouTube live event. Today is Wednesday, January 13th, and the year is 2021. I am so glad that you're here with me. Whether you're watching the replay or you are here for the live stream, I'm so glad that you've come by to watch and be with me. Tonight, we've got a pop-up fun fold card, and it might be a little different compared to some of the pop-up cards you've seen before. But in addition to the pop-up card I'm gonna demonstrate for you tonight, I have six other cards to share with you three of which are fun folds. It's a lot of inspiration tonight. Now, a couple things before we get started. You're gonna be able to find a link down in the video description below that will lead you over to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and the supplies for tonight's card. In addition to that, you'll be able to find the other details about the other six cards I'm gonna share with you tonight that are all part of the card making class for this month that actually cut off today. We just got started and jump started January with some brand new products. Secondly, I wanna introduce you to Megan. You'll see Megan's name here. Now we have a YouTube known problem. The name used to be in blue. Megan is putting a little wrench, little toolkit next to her name so that you can see it. Megan is my virtual assistant. And we get asked this all the time. She's a real person, definitely a real person. So Megan is here to answer your questions, help provide links and direct you if you have those. Because quite frankly, I'm gonna be stamping, my head's down at the table, I can't catch them all. So that's what Megan's here to do. And then finally, we would love to interact with you. So to chat or to leave a comment, if you're watching the replay, you are required by YouTube to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. So make sure that you do that. I come back and I read every single comment. I sure do. So it's just so exciting to have you with me. What do you say we get started? I'm going to turn the camera down and I'm get you all zoomed in. Here we go. I typically have my iPad next to me to be able to watch the live stream. And doesn't it figure my iPad did a little update today and it's being persnickety. And I'm telling you that because I want you to know, Megan, that I can't necessarily see everything just yet. I'm clicking some buttons to try to make it work. All right, let's work on the mechanism for this pop-up first. This is my Stampin' Trimmer, and I'm gonna be using the scoring blade that's part of this trimmer. Now, it also includes a cutting blade, and I love that you can keep them here on the track at the same time. I also love that the track is clear. So if you're always scoring or cutting those little tiny pieces, you can obviously get through there and see where you're going. This is a fantastic product. There's an extendable arm here that goes just past 17 inches. So if you're a scrapbooker, we got you covered. One of my favorite features about this is not just that I can keep both of these on the track, is this nice straight edge here at the top because I'm super challenged with getting things straight. So the very first thing we're gonna be doing is we are going to be scoring vertically on this piece of cardstock. Now I'm using basic black for my card base and you're gonna to wanna to make this mechanism for the card base, the same color as your card base. I think that it looks nicer that way. We are gonna decorate it a little bit. So this piece is cut three and a half by four and a quarter. Now this piece can be taller depending on the orientation of your card. So please keep that in mind. The very first score line that we're gonna be doing tonight is at three quarters of an inch. And just because you're with me, I'm actually gonna start here and go this way. Typically, when I'm alone, I do the three quarters on this side and I work backwards just because I find that there's more paper here for me to hold. But I want to give you clear, concise instructions. So I'm going to start here at the three quarter inch mark. You can see that ledge is coming into play. I'm going to close that and I am going to score. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot over to the one and a half inch mark and we're going to score again. And I'll score here and then scoot over one more to two and one quarter inch and then we are going to score, and then finally one more, and this is gonna be at the three inch mark. That means we're gonna have a little bit of a half inch section here at the end, and that's what we're gonna use for adhesive. So there we go, we've got this. That is all there is to this. I know some of you are probably thinking, no way. Yeah, wait. All right, so let me zoom you in just a little bit further, and I wanna get you a little bit more close up. There we go. The score lines now are here. I'm just gonna kind of pinch those up, and then I'm gonna go over those with my bone folder. Whenever you are doing a fun fold card, don't be afraid to reinforce those score lines. That's gonna allow your card to stand up a lot better. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add adhesive to that little skinny area that's here. That's the half inch area that was that last score line. And to make sure I don't get adhesive on my work surface, I'm using my beloved silicone craft sheet. Now, obviously, if you've watched my videos before, you know how much I love this product because adhesive 
Licka glue and hot glue will not stick to it. It'll rub right off. So with that half inch strip here, I'm gonna lay that flat and I can see the score line. So I know the perimeter here. I'm not sure you can see that in the video or not, but let's go ahead and let's add some adhesive right down that area here and then we'll stop. This is the Stamp and Seal Plus. It is super duper strong. And then to make this nice and easy, guess what we're doing? I'm just taking one of those score lines and I'm folding it and I'm just gonna close this on top of itself. And that's going to make the mechanism or the cube that we're going to need for this pop-up card. It's not hard, it's not hard at all. Okay, so let's set this aside for just a minute because now we need to go over to the card base. And the card base is four and a quarter by 11, typical card scored in half at five and a half inches. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna fold that score line up and we're gonna use that bone folder. What I like to do is I like to make sure that the inside of my card is finished first before I add the mechanism. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to piece this a little bit smaller for the insert. And just to save a little bit of time, I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I stamped it with my inside sentiment. I had a small scrap of designer series paper cardstock that we're gonna be using. Now we're gonna be doing a lot more, which is we're gonna pull all this together in just a minute. But I want to put this here. All right, so I'm gonna turn this upside down. And again, with my silicone craft sheet, just to protect my work surface, let's go ahead and add adhesive here around those four corners. I love the Stamp and Seal Plus because I don't ever have to worry about my cards falling apart with this stuff. I live in Florida where the humidity levels tend to be very high throughout most of the year. And if you don't use a good adhesive, you're gonna find, especially in humid climates, that your adhesive will lift. So this is a great product for that. I will tell you, I had a little bit of a learning curve with it when it was brand new because it has to be held in a different way. And I'm still a little bit challenged because I have osteoarthritis in my hands. So I tend to want to tip it a little bit. So if you see me frustrated with it, that's because it's a Lisa thing. This mechanism now is going to fit here. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a cheat sheet. And I'm actually going to write on this to make it easier for you to see. There is a seam where we made this mechanism, this cube. And I don't want the seam to be visible. So it's either going to be at the bottom or at the back. I'm gonna to choose to make it on the bottom. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm gonna flip this upside down and I am gonna take my little Sharpie marker and I'm writing the word bottom here. All right, that's so that you can follow along with me. This is gonna be on the bottom. Remember, bottom is gonna go here. This then is going to be to the back. So I'm gonna write the word back here. This is gonna make more sense in just a second. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring back in the silicone craft sheet and we are gonna add adhesive in one area first. This is one reason I like the Stamp and Seal Plus. If you use liquid glue, that's gonna be fine too. But I found that the tear and tape, I'd have to tear it off in segments and it takes a little bit more time. This is in a cartridge, nice and easy. So bottom is gonna go here, the bottom of the card base. Okay, so let me simulate bottom and then back. All right, so this goes flat, which is gonna make it really easy. You're gonna follow those words with me and we are going to add adhesive to here. Don't be chintzy. You wanna make sure this is going to stip, so whatever you're using, make sure that you're generous, okay? I'm taking that and that word bottom, I've got adhesive on my finger there, on the word bottom, and this is going to go on the bottom of the cardstock. Are you with me so far? Now let's make sure it's going the right direction because the back now has to be at the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up sideways. Let me turn this, hoping you can kind of see me. I'm lining up the sides and I'm making sure I'm coming close to that score line here. You don't wanna come too close, otherwise you're gonna impede the closing of this card. And then when you have it there, press it in place. This now is the back, watch. We're gonna turn this sideways. We're coming back to the adhesive and we're gonna add that on this area here. So I'm working within that perimeter once again. See, I'm tipping my adhesive, do you guys see it? So let me fix that and try to fill in that little bit area because I'm compensating for my hand. All right, so we've got adhesive now on the back side. Watch, all you're going to do, this is flat, is you're going to close the card and you are going to press. Now look what happens. Our mechanism for the pop-up is already attached to the card. So it attaches it here and here. So you can see it's gonna stand up very, very nicely when it's finished. Now we're gonna come back to this, but let's make the outside all pretty. So let me set that aside for just a moment. You know what, let's go ahead and do this first. This is a small 
um, piece of designer series paper that coordinated with this. I'm gonna decorate this little front panel. Now, obviously this is optional. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I'm choosing to decorate it with. This is just a half inch strip. Isn't this pretty? This is from the True Love Designer Series Paper Package. Those black and white patterns have my heart because black and white goes with everything. And I think it's timeless. So again, remember that we can make this flat and we're gonna attach this here. So let me just look to make sure that that's semi-centered and we're gonna work all the way across and then we'll attach it there. So there we go. Now we've got a little decoration. Let's work on the front of this card very quickly. Easy, easy. So I've got some designer series paper here, same one that we've used before. And I've got a piece of marvelous magenta cardstock. Isn't this color striking? Now with the black and the white, it certainly stands out. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over as well. And I'm gonna add adhesive now to the back side. Now remember, you're gonna find all the cutting dimensions down in the video description below. And that video description is below the title of the video. I get asked that an awful lot. So I wanna make sure that you know where it's at. And then this is going to get mirrored on here. I did leave a very small margin. Oh, that's about a 16th of an inch all the way around just to add some pretty. This is gonna get flipped over and we're gonna add more adhesive now to the back side because this is going to go on the front of the card. You're gonna be able to find all the um, supplies that I'm using tonight in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. Told you it was strong, I'm pressing too hard now. My hands are a little bit sore tonight. You know, the weather here in Florida is colder than normal. And when the arthritis just kicks up when it's cold. Anybody else can kind of vouch for that besides me? And my hands are sore, so it's not working really good on my paper. So I'm not going to fight this corner. You know what? Let's go this way. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we are going to adhere it to the front. So again, leaving a very small margin of cardstock all the way around. I'm trying to make it as even as possible. And then we are going to tack that in place. While you're over on my website at lisastampstudio.com, go ahead and click on the rewards tab you're gonna find that I offer exclusive and generous rewards for your orders. And tonight we're gonna to talk a little bit about class. Now let me set that aside for just a second. And I wanna bring in some designer series paper and some extra cardstock. Now this looks similar, doesn't it? Because it came from the same package of paper. On the back side, you have other patterns. All the Stampin' Up's designer series papers are double-sided for the most part, unless they're metallics or foils. But I love this because it's timeless. And tonight I've decided to use a bundle of products that I have literally fallen in love with and it's called Lots of Hearts. Now I know you might be thinking, I've got hearts. Well, let me just tell you, when I show you this card as well as the other ones, you don't have these hearts. The magic of this bundle includes the dies. Now you'll see I took some out. It's not Valentine's Day. I think the very first thing we see when we see hearts is we think Valentine's Day. But you know what? Hearts are timeless. You're going to be able to use them on any type of card. Well, it's a hello, miss you, get well, sympathy, holidays. I mean, it just is a timeless symbol. I used the coordinating dies that are inside the die set, and I die cut these before you joined me, okay? Just to save a little bit of time. And that left us with these. Isn't that really sharp? I absolutely love that. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to do a little bit of stamping on here to add a little extra texture to this. So I've got my scratch paper underneath me for that. And I'm going to come over to my Marvelous Magenta ink pad. This is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. Now I'm pulling out an image from that stamp set that is a string of vertical hearts. Now this is a photopolymer stamp, which means that it's clear. You're going to see that it's tinged slightly pink. Now with these very pigmented colors, they will end up kind of staining a little bit. It does not hurt the stamp. Just make sure you always clean your stamp and dry it before you put away. But I love this because it's actually gonna turn the color of the ink. Do you see what I've just done? I've turned the heart this way to make it easier for me. I want the hearts to be vertical and I know I don't stamp straight. I don't cut straight and I don't stamp straight. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna work across vertically. I find that this makes it a whole lot easier for my hand. Now you can stamp off a layer of ink on your scratch paper if you want it a little bit lighter, or of course you can go full strength like what I'm doing right here. But vertical allows me to try to get them separated about the same amount of space. So when this is all finished, 
it almost looks like designer series paper than actually a stamped image, doesn't it? And I also like to stamp off that excess ink. I think I'm a little bit off camera on your view on my scratch paper. That's a great tip for you as a stamper because that's going to reduce your trips of going to the sink and rinsing out your Stampin' Scrub or your Stampin' Chamois, which is going to need to be cleaned after a while with a lot of stamping. This is going to go on top of here. So let's go ahead and use that silicone craft sheet once again. Let's see if I can get my hands tamed enough to use this the right way. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to add that here right to the center. Look at those two colors together. I am a huge fan of black in anything because black is always very, very striking. Now, the last thing I want to do across here is I want to add a greeting. Now, I did stamp this ahead of time, and it's from that same stamp set. It says, sent with lots of heart. Can be good for anything, can't it? But I decided I wanted banner tips on here. Now, you may be used to doing that with your scissors, which works great. But I want to show you what I use, and this is another beloved thing here in the studio. This is the tailored tag punch. And this wonderful shape right here makes the perfect banner tips. Let me show you how it works. I turn it upside down so I can navigate where I'm going. And the one thing I love about it is you can make very narrow or very wide banner tips with this. So you're going to always make sure you cut your cardstock just a smidgen longer than you need. You're going to slide it in from the top. And I am looking to center that point here at the top of the punch. And then I'm going to punch. And look, perfect banner tip. And then I'll do the exact same thing now on this side. I'm looking to just center that point the best that I can. And then we'll punch. And there we go. We've got our banner. Quick and easy. And I love the fact that you've got all kinds of depth there. What I'm going to do is flip this over. And we're going to add some dimensionals to the back side. And these are the mini dimensionals because you can see this is a very small area. And with mini dimensionals, that means you don't have to chop up the big ones. And they are small for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my take your pick tool with my paper piercing tool attachment. And I'm going to add those right across the back side here. And that's going to help elevate that here. And then I'm going to use that same tool. And I'm going to stab that and remove those paper backings. And that's going to help corral them as well as remove them. Okay, again, arthritic hands can't do those little dexterity things very, very well. And this is going to go across here. Now this is going to go on the front of the card base, which is here. So I'm gonna flip that over one more time. That's our wrong side. Let's grab the full size dimensionals now. Let's put those here. And then I'm gonna take off that paper backing. I'm always cognizant of putting extra dimensionals on my projects because I know that it's going to go through the mail meter at the post office. And I wanna make sure that it comes out looking the same way as I sent it. There you go. Here comes the fun part. You ready to decorate this? Okay, let me grab a piece of cardstock. This is basic white cardstock. I'm gonna go back to that magenta ink pad and I've got my black memento ink pad here. This is my black ink pad of choice, especially with photopolymer and I love it for my alcohol-based markers. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be stamping some very large solid heart images. Now these are all part of that same stamp set. But remember, I told you, we're talking about my arthritis a little bit tonight. I find that I have a hard time getting the impression out. So I'm going to use my pierce mat. Watch what I'm going to do. Let me slide this up and out of the way. This is going to go underneath your cardstock. This little bit of foam is going to give ump from the bottom up so that I don't have to push and push on my very sore hands to get that image out. All right, so let me reach over and get some paper here. And the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to stamp this one with the plaid. And I'm going to use the magenta for that. I'm going to ink that up. And then I'm going to stamp that here. Lots of firm, even pressure, just so that you can trace out the design. You want it as solid as possible. Especially with larger photopolymer stamps, I find that the uh, pierce mat has really been a saving grace for me. And then I'm going to switch over now to this one that has little squiggly hearts in it. I think you'll appreciate it a lot bigger, better when I stamp it. So let's go ahead and ink that up as well. All right, that looks pretty good. And then let's go ahead. I just want to make sure I got it inked well. I think I do. And let's stamp that here. Again, lots of ink, lots of pressure, and lots of pushing. You want to trace out the design. I think some of the mistakes we all get to is that we work too quickly, right? We're excited to get it done and we don't take our time when we're stamping our images so they don't come out nice and solid and clear. This pierce mat, regardless if you have arthritis or not, wonderful for large images. 
Now you'll recall that there was a die that we used for the front. So that die cut both of these and I did die cut those ahead of time for you again, just to save a little bit of time. And that has left us with this. Don't those dies do a beautiful job? Wait till you see what else it does. I can't wait to share those with you. So I've got those and look what else I did. I took this die right here and I took a scrap piece of that magenta cardstock and I die cut that and look what that left. Isn't that fun? And then finally, there is another image in the stamp set that has the dots and there's a die that clear, uh, cuts that out as well. So we've got these four pieces now that we're gonna use to decorate the inside of this pop-up card. All right, so here we go. Remember, you can lay this flat, which is fantastic for mailing. This is a standard size for your envelope. They are going to get adhered here to the designer series paper panel. Couple very important tips. Keep in mind the proximity of the width of your card. So you don't want your hearts to extend past that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my black one and I'm going to be using glue dots. I find that that works much better for me because if I don't get too zealous with them, I can kind of wiggle them and position them just a little bit. And then if necessary, we can do what I call card surgery to kind of fix things. So I'm going to put one here at the top. I'm going to do another one here at the bottom. I'm going to be careful because I don't want to put too much because you don't want it to end up here at the top. So this heart is going to go like so. Again, you don't want to come past that designer series paper because remember, you got to close this. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that large magenta heart. And let's go ahead and add a couple glue dots here near the bottom. And that's going to hold this in place because remember, some of this is going to be freestanding. That one is going to go this way. Now, again, watch your bottom, watch your sides. You don't want it to hang out. And then once you're happy with it, give that a little bit of a push. And then we have a couple others. So we've got this heart here, which I'm going to add here. Now I can add adhesive because I know that I've got plenty of room because it's going to overlap this one here. So here's the silicone craft sheet. I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to bring in my adhesive and I add a little adhesive right there. And then we're gonna make sure that your finger's there so you know where it's going to land. And I'm gonna put that heart here. Last but not least, remember this pierced one? Okay, because of the holes, I'm gonna use glue dots. I don't trust myself. I'm afraid that I'm gonna get those right inside that little hole area and it's gonna show. So let's go ahead and add those right here to the back. There they are. And then this one I'm gonna add here. But again, before I go too far, I wanna make sure that that's not going to show outside the perimeter of my card. All right, then watch. I'm just going to give this a good push and then I'm simply going to close the card, give it a little press so everything is good and stuck and then we're going to open it. Oh my goodness gracious, is this not adorable? And look how easy it is. Just think of all the things you can put here. The only trick is remembering to do the bottom and the back and if you need to, grab yourself a marker or a white colored pencil and mark it for yourself to make it easy. Super, super, super cute. And I wanna give you a good quick side view here of this card. Isn't that fun? Remember what I said, if you don't feel like you've got enough adhesive here, I want to talk to you about card surgery because I use this word a lot. Go ahead and take your glue dots and then grab your take your pick tool. If I can find it, here it is. And you're gonna pick up one of the glue dots. If you need to, you can even distort the shape and make it small. And then you can go here. You see how this area now can be tucked? I'm going to place that glue dot here and I'm going to press and I'm going to pull. So now these are all tacked together and I don't have to worry about this falling apart. That's just a great card hack for you. I have six other cards to share with you and three of them are fun folds. Now let me pull them out. I've got them in a little packet right next to me that I wanted to share with you. Let me turn this upside down so that's not so obtrusive. These cards that I'm sharing with you are all part of this month's online card making class. You're going to be able to get the video to make all six of these cards along with a color PDF tutorial, step-by-step -step walking you through the whole thing. Isn't this cute? Look. Oh, don't you love that? Perfect alignment. The great thing about my videos is that they give you all the tips that you need. I talk to you and I assemble with you. So even if you're a new paper crafter, you can follow along easily. This is the second card for this month's card making class. Guess what? This is all the same products I just used on that card. Same dies, same papers, same everything. Now, of course, if you want your cards to look exactly like mine, you might want to buy the bundle unless you have hearts of your own. That's fine. 
I provide my card making class for free. Do you see what I did? Remember this heart? Well, I actually use it as a negative and I turn this into a birdhouse. That bird is part of the dies. Isn't that amazing? Same with this. My card making video is really going to make this so easy for you along with the tutorial. So keep in mind that I'm going to be able to provide this class for you absolutely free in exchange for a $50 product order. Now, it's very, very important that you know that you have to use the exclusive card making class postcode. Otherwise, I have no idea that your order is intended for the card making class. My card making class is only available for four days a month and it started today and it's good through Saturday. Isn't this fantastic? You see this thin outline? There's a die for that. And I talk you through the video and the easiest ways on how to adhere things and how to stamp them and put them together. The card making class host code, you're gonna be able to find that here. Megan's gonna share it. It's over on lisastampstudio.com. It's under the tab classes, card making class there. I would love to have you join us. The best thing is, is if you already have hearts and stamps and you don't wanna buy any more, you can buy whatever you want. Your $50 order can be any product that you like, but guess what, it gets even better. Because in addition to the video and that PDF tutorial, I am going to give you two other things, okay? Let me just turn that camera around really quick, and I'm going to go over those with you. The first is uh, Live with Lisa. Whenever you spend $50 in card class, which is the required minimum for the class itself, you are automatically included in a private event here on YouTube that I call Live with Lisa. I do product price giveaways. I also give away eight additional tutorials that you don't get anywhere else. And I stamp with you live. It is so much fun. I do two demonstrations there. I know some of you have been to live with Lisa before and can vouch for it. It's a great time. The second thing is something that Stampin' Up! is doing. And I'm grabbing it to show you. It is Stampin' Up!'s sale celebration. It is their large sale of the year. And for every $50 that you spend, that's every $50 increment, you're going to earn something from here absolutely free of your choice. What could be better than that when you get to pick it yourself? And that's every $50 increment. Now, when I talk to you about the exclusive card making class host code, I want one thing I want to point out. If you have a large wish, wish list like myself and your order for product is $150 or more, then don't use my exclusive card making class host code because Stampin' Up! is going to give you extra rewards on top of the sale products. I mean, talk about scooping up, right? But you're going to need to let me know that that order is intended for the card class. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing because you didn't use the exclusive host code. Very, very important. Now, listen, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving the current publications, we've got a beautiful annual catalog and a new mini catalog, you can request copies over at lisasstampstudio.com under catalogs. I would love to send those to you. I'm checking my notes really quick because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I think I've covered the card class pretty well. Again, there's only a four day ordering period. Now, for those of you that say, oh, I don't want to place an order, or perhaps you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in just the tutorial, I have that as well. I charge $1 per page. That's it. That includes all the pictures, all the cutting dimensions, the supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. This is the actual tutorial for this class. Here it is. It's all colored, all spelled out for you. It's $14 because it's 14 pages long. You'll be able to find that under the classes tab at my website as well under PDF tutorials. But I would sure love to share the video with you, which is exclusive only to the card class. And I would love to have you join us this month. My card making class changes every single month on the second Wednesday of every month. And this month, I'm super excited about the Lots of Heart Bundle. Now, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you haven't subscribed, I'm going to hope you do so because I'm coming back live with you, checking my calendar so I get the date right. It is Monday, January 25th at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'm going to be live with another amazing fun fold you're not going to want to miss. Lots more tips and tricks to share with you please subscribe. If you have enjoyed tonight's live event or the replay, if you're watching replays, please give it a thumbs up. It certainly helps us here on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I hope to see you with me on January 25th. Megan, thanks for all your hard work tonight. And I'll see you all again soon. Have a great evening.